Hello and welcome to another episode of the Part of Podcast. This time we are talking about people who think that they can't ride a motorcycle because they're too short. It's not true. You can ride any motorcycle you want and in this podcast that's what we're going to talk about. Before we go ahead, could you please subscribe to this channel? Hit the bell notification icon so that you get notified automatically. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy the podcast which is also broadcast on all of the audio platforms and if you have a rider who think that there is a physical reason why they can't ride a certain kind of motorcycle please do show them this video because i think this will help so short riders now if you think about human beings as a species you would realize that when we are born we don't have a lot of skills at all a little calf already knows where the food is more or less they can already walk a puppy the same thing but human beings we are helpless children right and everything that you've learned from that point till today whether it's how you eat brushing your teeth what to eat what work you do what skills you have every one of these skills is something that you've spent time learning sometimes out of interest hopefully all of it out of interest but sometimes out of interest sometimes because your parents just won't get off your back until your cursive writing is as neat as it can be and to me riding a tall motorcycle for a person of short stature is exactly the same thing it's a skill that needs to be learned the reason why we're doing this in the podcast format rather than simplified is because there's a psychological barrier here that i think we all need to cross and it doesn't restrict itself to the idea of i'm short the motorcycle's tall so i can't handle it we'll come to that but we'll come to that at the end what i would like to tell you is that i don't believe that human beings are restricted by their physical attributes in a lot of ways we were not designed to go any faster than running but here we are riding 200 bhp motorcycles and we're thrilled by it but it's not like an impossible challenge for us right for a species whose senses physically were not designed to perceive the world at speeds faster than 35 kilometers an hour we're doing 360 on a motorcycle faster in a car and we don't think twice about it because that person who achieved that result has spent a little bit of time acquiring that skill and in the same way if you're of short stature and you're looking at a motorcycle with a 900 mm seat height it's not an insurmountable challenge unless your brain tells you and you accept the idea that oh i cannot do that and to me i think there is no situation where i cannot do that is the right response we can do anything we want if we put our minds to it that's what makes humanity such an amazing race whether it comes from our ability to create new things to create new technology to have such rich experiences and on the dark side to be as cruel as we are sometimes uh, to animals to each other to communities and all of that it's all coming from the same brain and the brain is able to take on new skills and that adaptability is the key to why human civilization why you and me are the way we are what you're saying when you're saying i'm 5 foot 1 that thing has a 900 mm saddle i will not be able to ride it is you're saying my brain does not have the capacity to adapt to that and honestly it's true maybe for 1% of you it's not true for everybody else what you need to reorient yourself to is the idea that if the motorcycle is super tall and i am super short i have one more thing to learn before i can get on that motorcycle and ride let's look at the mathematics of it let's assume that you go from your home to your work which is a 5 km commute and there's let's say 10 traffic lights along the way and your luck is so poor that you're going to have to stop at each of these traffic lights right so your high challenge is primarily manifesting itself in these places right you have a challenge of hopping on to your motorcycle as you're leaving home the challenge of putting your feet down and securing yourself at each of these 10 traffic lights and then finally parking the motorcycle in the office if you think about the time you spent riding versus the time you spent stopping you'd realize that 90% of the time your height is not a problem because you're moving and therefore the actual challenge of riding a tall motorcycle applies to you despite your height only 10% of the time now think about the other things that you do in your life and think about the kinds of things that you do regularly where the challenge of doing that thing is far larger than 10% and you do it anyway without thinking about it because either somebody forced you to try it or because you were inspired to try it or because you did the right thing which is read up about it find a little bit of data about it see how it was done how that 15 18 20 percent of challenge was overcome and now you're enjoying the rest of the 80 percent of the activity and the 20 percent of the challenge is something you've already forgotten about because you've internalized that process 
The reason why we worry when we have really tall motorcycles, and it's not just you, I'm six foot tall, but when I ride the Rally Expulse, the height of that seat bothers me as well, right? It's I think 900 or 910 mm at full height. And yes, that is not an easy height to live with, but it doesn't stop me from riding the Expulse. Because the first idea that I let go, and this is not something I discovered, this is something that is easily available on the internet if you search short riders and tall motorcycles, is the idea that I have to have both my feet on the ground. You don't. If you were to just accept that I can choose which side the motorcycle leans just before I stop, and you can, you just have to turn the handlebar in that direction, literally a fraction of a second before it comes to a stop, you can choose whether you want to put your left foot down or your right foot down, depending on where you are. If the road is severely sloped like this, for example, at a traffic light where you're right on the edge and the drain is next to you, the road could be sloped, you just turn the handlebar to the right at the last fraction and take your right foot off and you'll be in a secure position. And even a tall rider in that situation who chose badly and tried to put their left leg down and now the height is much longer, right? Because the road has fallen away from your feet as it were, you are going to have a crash. And I have done this. Uh, my mechanic's garage, Chotu's garage, was in Motibagh behind the Gurdwara and uh, it was a little bit of a gully and then they had made a drain for which they had a sloped cover. And I've come to a stop on my RD350 and not remembered that the drain slopes away on this side and I tried to put my right foot down and my freshly painted RD350 was down before I could say anything. Now, nobody got hurt, the paint got scratched, they all had a laugh at my expense, but it's a mistake that I never made again. And even today, when I'm riding small motorcycles or large ones, just before I come to a stop, I don't switch my brain off. I'm just looking at the condition and choosing where I would put my feet. Although my height does allow me to not have this bother me too much. But it's not a matter of height. If I choose badly and there's gravel on one side and I choose that side and my foot just slips on the gravel, I'm back to square one and the height is no longer the issue here. So the first thing a short rider needs to do is to accept the idea that putting both feet down is not going to be possible and that doesn't automatically mean that you are not going to be able to ride this motorcycle. You're going to spend a little bit more time than normal accepting the idea and employing the idea and practicing the idea and perfecting the idea that you will choose a foot and use that to stabilize yourself and you will have to pay attention and think about how to choose well. It's a very simple thing to do. If you're even shorter than that, you'll find videos of people who dismount and mount motorcycles once they are moving, sort of like you would do with a cycle. Now, when you do it on a cycle, the cycle doesn't have much weight, but it's not like you're carrying the weight of the cycle anyway, right? What you're doing is you're letting the motion of the cycle stabilize the cycle. The weight is going to the ground through its wheels. You're not really carrying it and you hop on the cycle, assuming that the gyroscopic stability of the bicycle will carry your weight onto it and you'll find stability pretty quickly. The exact same principle applies to a motorcycle. Mentally, we have to make the shift that that 17 kilo bicycle versus this 117 kilo motorcycle is a big change. In neither case are you carrying the weight and a heavier motorcycle with bigger wheels and more weight in the wheels is actually going to be more stable than the bicycle in the first place. So the challenge is actually smaller, but your mind has to come to a bigger place to say, yes, I can do this. The same applies to a 267 kilo really tall ADV as well. The trick about it is to think about it like a skill. If you can learn throttle control, if you can learn how to use your brakes, if you can learn how to sit on your motorcycle, then you will be able to learn with a little bit of effort how to get on and get off the motorcycle no matter what your height is. The reason why it is important to think about it like this is because the easiest thing to do is to give up. The easiest thing to do is to tell yourself, I'm just not capable of this. But think about the implication of thinking like that. When you think like that, the only thing you achieve is you paint yourself out of that picture. Okay, so if I were to decide today that uh, motorcycles as a career has been awesome for me, but I don't want to do this any longer, I want to try something new, and then decide that, I don't know, nuclear fusion is not a field that I, do, I have the mental capacity to work in, well, that's the end of it, right? I will never be able to work in nuclear fusion. If on the other hand, I were to decide that theoretical and quantum physics is what interests me, I'm not trained in it, I haven't spent the years that say an average scientist of my age has already done, but I think that if I were to put in the effort, if I were to practice, I would be able to understand what the field is like and be able to work successfully in it. I promise you, my quantity of success might vary, but I will be able to work in it. That's how human beings were designed. There are very, very few limits mentally and physically that are outside our mind. 
And when you say, sir, I am 5 foot 1 or 4 foot 11 and I want to ride a 390 adventure and uh, the seat height is scaring me, what you're saying is you're at the edge of making a leap saying, I can learn that or I refuse to learn that. And the thing is, if you're 18, 19 years old, you're already 4 foot 11 or 5 foot 1, it's not like you're miraculously going to become 5 foot 8 or 6 foot day after tomorrow. Your biological growth has stopped. If your mental growth also stops because your biological growth has stopped, you've just lost a part of the world that you could have otherwise accessed just by keeping your mind open. I'll give you an example. I went to Japan for uh, what is called the Thanksgiving Day where HRC and all of the other Honda racing departments call all of their racers together for this year-end festival, uh, pre-COVID obviously, where all the cars, all the motorcycle, everybody just comes together and has a great time. And there, it's a spectator event where you sit in the stands and you watch all kinds of race cars and race bikes out there on the track at Twin Rink Motegi. The highlight of the event in the year I attended it was the fact that Jensen Button was driving the Honda F1 car and Danny Pedroza was on the Honda MotoGP motorcycle, driving the oval together and the sounds and how amazing it sounded and felt, it's all still in my head and it's still a very, very vibrant memory. But once they got off and they started doing the photo up, the really funny stuff happened because remember, Jensen Button is a tall European person and Danny Pedroza is a very short European person. So I remember uh, Jensen Button sitting on the tire of the Formula One car, looking down at Danny Pedroza and talking to him. And at that point, you think about how a person of that small stature is riding a motorcycle of that kind of performance. It became even funnier when the photograph started and Danny was standing behind the motorcycle roughly where the front wheel is and photographs were being clicked and there was a certain section of the audience that couldn't see Danny clearly because obviously the fairing and the helmet on the tank was in the way. So they asked him to move further into the motorcycle. When he moved further back, roughly behind the tank of the motorcycle, the funniest thing happened is because I was directly in front of the motorcycle, the guys on this side were taking pictures of Danny Pedroza and all of us on this side couldn't see Danny Pedroza anymore because his height was less than the motorcycle on a paddock stand and a helmet kept on its tank. But that same gentleman will climb onto that motorcycle and ride the heck out of it. And if he can do it, there is no reason why you and I cannot do it. What never stopped Danny Pedroza was the idea that I am a relatively small statured person. The RC is a much larger motorcycle. This is not for me. Maybe I want to stick to 250s. Danny never thought of it like that and became this very, very senior, very, very highly respected MotoGP rider. But physically, mentally, he's not that different from you. If he can make the leap, I think so can you. The only thing that is stopping you from doing it is the way you're thinking. And you know the best thing about being human is that we can change our thinking. So stop thinking about how high that motorcycle is and how difficult it would be to ride it. Think about how much fun it will be to ride the motorcycle and give yourself an incentive to learn how to ride that. Because I promise you, once you figure out how to ride tall motorcycles, any motorcycle on earth becomes a motorcycle that you can ride and have fun on. It's not something that I think you should be missing out on. Thank you so much for watching. This is a short podcast where we talked about how short riders should deal with tall motorcycles. If this helps, leave us a comment. If there's other topics you'd like to see in this podcast, leave us a comment as well. If there's a friend who you think will benefit from this podcast, do send them the link. This podcast will also appear on most of the major audio podcast platforms. Share it there if you prefer. But do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so that when this podcast goes out, you get notified automatically from the next time on. All of the older podcast episodes are on youtube.com slash powerdrift as a playlist. Please do go see it. There's lots of interesting information, discussion and debate in there. Thank you so much for watching. This is the Powerdrift Podcast.